Congratulations to the students in Lana Gloshot's class at the L. Haynes High School in Washington, D.C. for winning the Art Teacher's Prize for our October Art Dare. Our October Art Dare asked people to interpret this idea of your future self. We were so thrilled here at Art Prof, myself and our staff of six teaching assistants, by the extraordinary range of interpretations that Ms. Gloshot's class created for this prompt. There were pieces which were comical, some were quirky, some were more serious, and we thought all of you did such a terrific job with this prompt. The Art Teacher's Prize for our Art Dares is a class critique. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through and speak individually about each student's submission for this prize. This painting has a very beautiful vibrancy. I think there's a real richness to the way the different patterns and colors were layered on top of each other. That's something that I think is very effective in painting. When you keep layering different patterns over and over again, it really develops a depth in the painting, which is very effective. Another thing that I'm noticing in this painting is the pattern, the black pattern that is dispersed throughout the entire piece. I think that really brings a nice liveliness and those shapes really jump out in a really effective way. One thing that I think you may want to consider is giving the painting a little bit more breathing room. The painting has so much energy and so much to look at that in some ways it's a little bit over the top and what I might suggest is perhaps a few areas of the painting where maybe the pattern is a little bit less pronounced, maybe a few more areas of color that are a little bit less saturated. For example, maybe if you have some areas where the color is more muted, it gives our eye an opportunity to rest because while I love the vibrant colors, I do feel that I want a few moments to balance against that, and that might be a good way to push forward with this painting. I might also consider doing something with the white paint strokes that are layered on top of the entire painting. I like that they're there, but I think what you could consider is the width of your brush stroke, because what I'm seeing in some of the brush strokes is that all of them are very similar to each other. They're all about the same height. They're all about the same width. And if you vary that up a little bit, it'll give our eye a little bit more to feast upon. What I see a lot in paintings is students will stick to one brush the whole time and what I'd encourage you to do is to get all different kinds of brushes of many many different sizes so it's easier for you to vary the different kinds of strokes that you're creating. This pencil drawing is really nicely composed. One relationship that you've established in the drawing that I think is really effective is the crisscrossing diagonals that are set up by the bow and the violin. So you have the bow cutting across the page and then you have the violin moving upwards. That's a really beautiful dynamic that's really lively, really engaging for your piece. One thing that I might think about pursuing is having more tone in this drawing, have more areas where you shade in, maybe more aggressively with the pencil. What I see in the drawing is that it's mostly limited to line, and while that's a good way to get started, I certainly think you can push it further and start thinking about making the drawing a little bit richer in terms of tone. I am really excited to see that you made a background for this piece. So frequently I see a lot of drawings where people really just focus on the figure and they totally ignore the background, so I really like the integration of that. One thing you might consider for your background is perhaps getting a little bit more specific. It seems like this person is standing indoors somewhere because I see the door on the right hand side, there's the windows on the left hand side, but you might think about different ways that you could personalize the background a little bit more. For example, are you imagining that this person is in their house? Are they in their bedroom? In that case, you would have, for example, certain objects in that space, maybe something hanging on the wall, just to make the background a little bit less generic. It will inform us a little bit more about who this person is. But I think it's a really great subject. I think it seems like there's a narrative going on in the piece, and it's a way to really engage your audience by really telling a story in that way. I'm excited about this charcoal drawing because it seems to me that you really embraced the full spectrum of tone that a material like charcoal is really capable of. 
frequently when I see students using charcoal, they're afraid to make the charcoal as dark as it can really get. And I love the fact that you really push the darkness, especially in the hair. I feel that the hair has a real substance to it. I can feel the texture of it. I think you did a terrific job in that area. I also think it's really nice that in the neck area, you really took the time to observe the muscles that are in the neck. Oftentimes people don't really think about the neck as being that important when they're doing a portrait, but the neck can actually be a very expressive part of a portrait. And I'm really glad that you're exploring that. However, what I would do is look a little bit more carefully at the muscles in the neck because the muscle that you're articulating, it's called the sternocleidomastoid. And it's a muscle that starts behind your ear and it comes down this way and it hits this spot on your neck, which is called the pit of the neck. And what I'm seeing in your sternocleidomastoid muscle is that it's too short. It should actually come down and be a little bit longer. So just make sure you're taking the time to really think about that. And the other thing I would consider as well is the placement of your portrait. Right now your portrait is pretty much dead center and also the bottom section near the neck sort of disappears. It looks like you were working on the drawing for a while and then maybe didn't get around to finishing it. So I would say if you don't want to include that area, I would crop the drawing or take the time to finish up the neck and the shoulders because you don't want to leave that area unresolved. I think the shadows on the face are beautifully done. There's a real substance to that. The form feels very palpable. You did a great job in that area. However, I would be careful about the eyes because what I see a lot is these whites of the eyes People think about them as being literally white, but I'm seeing with the lighting situation that you have in your portrait that actually that area should be a lot darker. It probably should be more like a medium gray. So just watch out for that because oftentimes if you leave them white, they almost look like they're glowing. It's a little bit of an odd effect. So I would watch out for that. But I think great job really getting into your material and understanding what it's capable of. There is so much personality in this portrait. I think one of the best decisions that you made was to really run with this distortion of the face. You did such a great job. It's a really expressive form. I also feel that this face is huge. I mean, I almost feel like I'm looking at a 500 ton head. It seems much, much larger than life. And I love that this portrait has such a dramatic presence to it. This portrait reminds me a lot of Lucien Freud's etchings. He was an oil painter and he's primarily known for doing figurative oil paintings, but Lucien Freud did a lot of portrait etchings which have this distortive expressive quality. So that's definitely an artist to consider. I think really beautiful work with the charcoal material. I think especially around the cheekbones, there's a real sense of the skeletal structure underneath. I mean, I really feel like I could grab this face. It really looks that substantial. I also think it's hysterical that this person is sticking their tongue out. It's a little bit um, humorous in a way. I mean, there's just so much to keep me occupied looking at this drawing. There's two parts of the drawing that I think I would consider developing further. I would think about the head a little bit more in terms of where the hair is, because the face is so wonderful and beautifully drawn, but then the head and the hair and the back seems a little bit too small. It's a little bit odd because I think when people draw a portrait, they get very wrapped up in drawing the facial features. And oftentimes people forget that there is a lot of form in the back of the head. So I would just recommend bulk up that area. I think you can really get the hair to be more dramatic and much more substantial. Now, I don't mind necessarily if you don't want to include the neck. In fact, maybe that goes along with the 500 ton head reference, but I do think it's a little bit awkward that it's the bottom of the drawing it seems like you started to do a little bit of the neck but then you didn't finish it so I would just be much more decisive and say okay this is a gigantic head with no neck or say it's a person with a neck you have to make a decision because right now the drawing is waffling between those two options it's a little bit confusing but I think overall what a great portrait it's got so much personality and I really feel like I know this person I feel like I know all of their quirks through the way that you represented them immediately what strikes me about this landscape is how mysterious and haunting it is I feel that you've done such a great job 
of creating an atmosphere that is really unique and surrealistic. One thing that I think is fascinating about the tall tree-like forms is that they're not really trees and they're not really architecture. They're this strange mixture of the two and I love that. I love that I can't really pin down exactly what these structures are. They keep me thinking about what they could possibly be. You did a great job of using the black paper to your advantage. For example, one thing that I love about your drawing skill is that especially on the left hand side, there's so many just lovely subtle moments where you're using that black paper to back up the more refined marks that you're making. And that's something that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do with white paper. The black really is this foundation for you to work on top of. One thing that I would think about pursuing further is the figure, because the figure, I think, in some ways is drawn with a different language than the landscape. For example, when I look at the landscape, it's very subtle, it's very soft. And when I look at the figure, the figure is very much an outline. The figure doesn't have the same kind of depth that I feel the rest of the landscape has. I mean, my first opinion is that your landscape is so compelling that I'm not even sure you need the figure. I mean, I like the figure there, I suppose, in terms of giving us a scale reference, because without the figure, you don't really understand how tall the tree-like structures are. But on the other hand, I also wonder if that matters at all, given that this piece is so dreamlike. So I would just say, ask yourself, do you really need that figure? Because I think the landscape on its own is absolutely riveting. This figure drawing has so much energy to it. I think that you've done such a terrific job of really engaging with the charcoal material because what I see a lot with charcoal is people tend to worry if things aren't precise or they really want things to be very accurate. And I love the fact that you've really departed from what the figure really looks like and you've really pushed the form. There's so much distortion in this figure and I think that really gives it so much character. For example, one of my favorite parts of this drawing is the hands. The fact that the hands have been elongated, they have this very slender, um, beautiful quality to them that makes them a little bit more graceful. I think that's really great the way that that's done. The texture of the pants area, I think, is really nicely done. It's clear that the charcoal material was used very rigorously. You can see the individual marks, and I love that you're showing us the way that you're using the actual charcoal. I mean, I feel like I'm looking at the drawing and I can just imagine the kinds of strokes that you're using to create it. One thing that I think you're really taking advantage of that I think some people don't do as much as they could is really getting the eraser involved in your drawing process. I think it's common for people to think about an eraser as simply a tool for getting rid of mistakes, but you're really drawing with the eraser. The eraser seems like a very prominent participant in your drawing process, and I think that's great. What I would love to see with this drawing is for it to be finished because while I really love some of the aspects of the drawing that are starting to come together, I do feel that to a certain degree, the drawing's a little bit fragmented. For example, the whole upper section of the drawing on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side is totally empty. The face is blank. I'm not saying that you have to draw a face necessarily. It's just that the other components of the figure are so well drawn that I notice really quickly that there is no face. It really feels like something is missing. So I would just try to be more comprehensive about making sure that you're thinking about how all the different parts of the drawing work together because you can have separate areas that I think are really beautifully done, but they have to work together as a group. One artist you might look at is Kathy Kollowitz. Kathy Kollowitz was a German expressionist artist and she drew, I think, some of the most incredible drawings of hands. She does a very distorted, efficient way of drawing with really aggressive marks with her drawing tools. So she would be a good person to look at for inspiration. I'm really excited to see the unusual point of view that you've taken with this figure. Foreshortening is such a great way to do that because we know the human figure when reclining is very long and yet because your point of view is looking at the figure from the feet, the figure gets compressed, it becomes foreshortened. So it's this very odd perspective that you can take on the figure that massively distorts things. I think that's one of the best choices that you made. 
I also think you did a great job really putting the figure into a context. What I see a lot is when people draw the figure, they get so wrapped up in drawing the figure that they forget that the figure has to be somewhere. And I'm looking at your drawing. I love the fact that you have the figure clearly on some kind of a mattress. I feel that there's a lot of weight to the figure and even something as simple as the plant, which is on the left hand side, that also describes the environment. So I think great job really putting the figure into a context. The part of the drawing that I would work on further is really developing a wider range of grays because while I really enjoy the fact that the drawing has such rich deep blacks and really really bright whites, it feels that there isn't a lot of gray in this piece and if you could get more gray tones, for example if you take a kneaded eraser and you really lift out of the black, you can make minor adjustments so that the black doesn't get too flat. Black is really effective and you need it, but if you have too much black in your drawing, it can actually flatten some of the parts of your piece. So think about really pursuing that gray. I mean, I think this drawing could be worked on more. I think that um, it's a really good um, foundation that you've established already, and you certainly could just take a kneaded eraser to the whole thing and see how you can push those grays. I think it's really great and also very gutsy to take on political subject matter in your artwork. And of course, there's a huge long history of artists doing political work going back all the way to France with Daumier, who did a number of caricatures of judges, of different politicians. There's also the German expressionist artist George Grosch and also the political cartoons which you see around today as well. So that's a great way to really engage with current events. I think what I would consider more though is trying to really dig into what you're representing in the image. I think that there's obviously a lot of charged imagery in this piece. Um, even if you just bring up the name Hitler, that already brings up a lot of strong emotions for a lot of people. And I think I would just consider how you use that imagery a little bit more, because I know for some people it's very difficult to engage with imagery like that. That is why political artwork is so difficult. One thing you could consider to make the piece exaggerate the expression of the figure of Donald Trump in the center is I would play with scale a lot more. For example, I think the fact that the head is larger than the hand, I think that's a good start, but I would go even further. Like for example, I would make the head double the size and maybe make the hand extremely small. Maybe the desk is very tiny. So if you could think about ways that you can make the piece more exaggerated. I think it helps people accept the imagery a little bit more because it seems more humorous. I think right now it's a little bit too straightforward and so it's harder to see this as um, a humorous image. I mean, I'm, I don't know if you're trying to make it humorous, but it seems like with all the symbols and the imagery and the distortion, that seems to be the approach. One other thing you could consider as well is really thinking about your line work. Because what I'm seeing in the drawing right now is a lot of the line work is very similar. A lot of the lines are the same width. A lot of them are the same darkness. Even if you just change the darkness of the line, have some of the lines be very light, have some of them be a little bit more gray, that could give your drawing a little bit of a more refined touch to it. So it doesn't seem so predictable all the time. I mean, good for you for tackling this. This is a very tough thing to um, really explore as an artist. I think it's important for artists to do this. Artists have been addressing politics and current events for centuries. You just have to really be aware that in some ways when you make political artwork you're opening Pandora's box and you're playing with fire. This is a really thoughtful portrait. I think it's very clear looking at this piece that this is a person who's really deeply immersed in thought. You get that pensiveness across so beautifully, especially in the eyes. I think the fact that the eyes are looking right at us, this person's acknowledging our presence, that's a really important part of portraiture to think about whether or not the portrait subject is looking at the viewer or not. And I think this is really appropriate given the subject matter and the atmosphere that you're creating in this piece. I think one area that was so well done was the way that you did the shadows around the eyes. So frequently what I see in portrait drawings is students get very wrapped up in the eye itself and they don't really think about the eye socket or the skeletal structure that surrounds it. 
I think the fact that you've made them so pronounced, not only does that add to the mood, but it also makes the structure of the face much more convincing. Great job pointing the hand moving across the face. That's a very powerful diagonal, makes your composition a lot more lively. However, what I would consider is really making sure that that hand is very distinctive from the face. For example, the area of the thumb, I think almost disappears into the grayness of the side of the face. So you have to make sure that you really show the distinction between the hand and the face itself. Otherwise they look almost like they're connected in a way. So just get a little bit more specific in that area. I would also say on the hand, you did a great job really articulating the knuckles. I mean, this is one part of the hand that is so important to stress, but I would move down forward on this section of the hand and really show the wrist. The wrist is a part of the hand that I think oftentimes gets ignored because people are so wrapped up in drawing the fingers, but because the wrist is so large in your portrait and it does extend downwards into the arm, I would certainly make sure that you articulate that a lot more. Beautiful composition though. I think that you really thought about the placement of the figure on the page, something that I think oftentimes a lot of people forget about or don't take the time to address. And also I think the fact that the hair is so present and so dark really gives the figure a very nice presence. I really like the mood of this portrait. It feels very dreamy, very relaxed. It almost feels like this figure is floating somehow. I think you've done a great job of showing that and I think a big part of it is the fact that the figure's eyes are closed. If she was looking at us or very alert, we wouldn't get that almost sleep-like state that she seems to be engaged in. I think part of that also is the placement of the figure. For example, the way the face is tilted backwards, she almost seems like she might be falling or something. So that's a really unusual take. Most of the time when I see portraits, people are very upright and looking straight forward. This is a very different kind of approach to that. One thing you may want to consider in terms of developing the drawing further is spending more time on the hair. The hair takes up a huge part of your drawing. In fact, there's more hair in the composition than there is of the face. The face is actually much smaller. So I think for that reason, you probably want to develop more of a range of gray tones. You want to show more highlights in the hair, give the hair a little bit more substance. And if you can get that to really work, then I think the figure is really going to have a very strong presence. So consider that, but I think it's a really great piece in that it does have so much a character and emotion to it. That's something that sometimes gets overlooked in portraits and you've clearly really spent time thinking about about that. This is such a riveting piece. It's a drawing that I could imagine if I saw it in person, it probably would just leap right off the wall. Part of that is you've been so gutsy with your colors. I think color is one of those subjects, a lot of people are afraid of color, and so what you end up seeing a lot is drawings that have little touches of color but haven't gone all the way, and I love how extreme the color is in this piece. Part of the reason why your color scheme is really working is that this is a really surrealistic image. For one thing, it's quite obvious because of the scale of the subject, because you've got this huge planet, this pretty large person. I mean, if they're that tall, they're standing next to a planet. It's got to be a pretty big person, but also these gigantic hands on the left and the right hand side. So I think what you've really done if you've, is you've invented basically a world. And because you've been so extreme about it, we really believe it. That's what I think is really working about it. One thing I would think about fixing would be the composition. The composition is very symmetrical and centered. Those two things combined tend to make the composition a little bit static. One simple thing you could do would be to take the hands put the right hand going up at the top and then place the other hand towards the bottom. So just by offsetting the two hands in that way, that could take away the sense of symmetry. Another thing you can consider is realigning the planet and the figure so that the figure isn't right in the middle. Even if you just took the planet, moved it two inches to the left or to the right, that would give us a little bit more diversity in terms of your negative shapes in the background. 
that would also help get rid of the symmetry and the entire composition. You could also spend a little bit more time on the hair in the figure. I love the drama, the shape of the hair is so wonderful, but I think some of the outlines that you've drawn in the middle flatten it a little bit. I would think about adding some highlights on the side, maybe developing some shadows on the hair. That'll help the hair get a lot more three-dimensional. But great job really engaging with your material. I know, like I said before, color is a tough subject to do, and I love the fact that you've embraced it so much. This portrait is so lovely and tender. You can really sense the deep emotional bond between this mother and child in this charcoal drawing. Part of that is not just the distortion of the figures, which I think is really appropriate, really working for this piece, but I think the fact that the child's face and the mother's face, they almost seem fused together in a way. I think that was a great decision on your part, but another aspect, which is a little bit more subtle, but I think just as effective, is the way that the hair of the child and the mother really merge. You can't tell where one ends and the other begins. And I think that um, dramatic um, merging of the two figures is really contributing to us understanding their deep bond. Another aspect that I think is working very nicely is the mother's arm, which is really wrapping throughout the entire composition. So that was a great choice in terms of the placement. One thing I think I would tweak would be the edges of the page and how the subject meets those edges. Particularly on the left-hand side in the lower section of the drawing, the figures get really close to the edge of the paper. And I think when you're that close to the edge of the paper, you may as well just let your figures go right off the page. It's awkward when things are bumping right up against the edge of the paper. So that's one thing you could do just to let the composition flow a little bit more. I think it'll make the figures breathe a little bit more. It'll give them more space to move around. That's another thing you could think about. But terrific job, especially with the faces. I feel that there's so much expression and you can really sense what these two people mean to each other. It's a very poignant, very lovely piece. This portrait, I think, has a really effective use of tone. As I look throughout the entire portrait, it's very clear to me that you've really thought about the different kinds of grays, the highlights, the shadows, particularly in the neck area. The neck to me has so much volume. For example, that really dramatic highlight that's been removed with an eraser on the right-hand side of the neck, I think is really strong, brilliant luminosity coming out in that area. But even that gigantic cast shadow that's right underneath the beard, I think has so much presence to it. And great job on the beard. I think sometimes, People are very afraid to work on facial hair because it is very textured, it's very unpredictable, it's not an easy texture to convey, but you've put so much energy into your mark making that I really believe that part of the face. Another part of this portrait that I think is working really well is that this seems like a very specific individual. I feel like I know this person and I think part of it is the fact that the eyes are pushed all the way to the right hand side. It seems like he's occupied with something. I'm curious about that in some ways, but also the expressiveness of the marks that you've put across the face, I think really show the form of his face very, very beautifully. You could probably spend some time pumping up the clothing. Clothing in a portrait oftentimes gets ignored because people get so concerned about working on the face, but I think if you could talk a little bit more about the shirt that this person is wearing, that may be another way for us to have some more insight on their personality. And also don't forget about your background. You've done so much great work on the face that when you look at a portrait like this, you say, well, why didn't they spend the time to really give that background the same kind of attention that they gave to the face? So just make sure you're a little bit more comprehensive about giving all the different parts Parts of your drawing the same level of attention that you've given to the face but I think overall excellent job on this portrait you, you've really got a, a very expressive way of drawing that really works in this context 
The downward gaze of this figure really makes this portrait a lot more unusual. The fact that the figure is looking down makes me think that we're a little bit higher up than this figure, and that's very different. Most of the time when you see portraits, you're pretty much eye to eye with the portrait, and in this case, we don't see that. So it's a little bit different and really refreshing to see a different kind of view than what we're used to seeing. I think it's a really good decision that you cropped the upper section of the hair because it's almost like it gets me to imagine how much more hair is up there. And so that's a really nice moment where you're able to suggest the presence of something without actually drawing it. Now, what I would think about doing in general with the entire drawing is just spending more time on it. It's clear to me that you've got a great composition and you've really started to articulate, especially some of the curls and the texture and the hair, but I think certainly you could spend a lot more time on it. One thing you could do to speed up your drawing process is instead of using a regular pencil, you might think about getting a graphite stick, which is a lot thicker and a lot wider, and that will let you cover areas of the drawing a lot more quickly. I find that pencil in general is just always a slow medium. It doesn't matter who you are. And so a graphite stick or even a woodless pencil would be a great way for you to really get moving with the material um, because what this drawing really needs, it needs tone. There's a great sense of line. It's beautifully composed, but you got to spend more time with it. Make it richer. Get some tones in there. I think if you do that, you have really, really excellent results. Looking at this painting, I almost feel like I'm looking at this explosion of colors. And part of that is your placement of the flower towards the bottom of the page and also the choice to have the petals go off the page. I think oftentimes people don't really want to crop their subject because they want to include the entire thing, but sometimes cropping is such a great way to give your subject a bigger presence. I feel that if you had just shown only the flower and we had a lot of background, I don't think it would have nearly the presence that it has right now. In fact, when I look at the piece, there's really no background at all. I mean, the flower really is so dominating and I think that's unusual. A lot of the times when people draw flowers, the flowers are in a vase or it's one flower at a time. I love the fact that you really created this very dominant space for the flower to exist within. To develop the piece further, I would think about really getting more dramatic light and dark contrast. It's very easy, I think, when you're painting to forget about light and dark contrast because what happens a lot is people get very wrapped up in doing the colors and they start to really rely on color contrast to create the effects that they want. But the fact of the matter is, even in a painting with lots of color, you still have to think about light and dark contrast. So I would look at the painting and say, okay, do I have a really, really dark dark? Do I have a really, really bright white? Looking at the painting right now, I don't really see either one. I see all the tones in the middle, which you need, and those are really nicely done, but you've got to really anchor the piece with some dark darks and give the piece a little bit more luminosity with some brighter whites. I think that would really help the piece be a little bit more dramatic and higher in contrast. It, it will really give this painting the punch that it needs. But really nice job, I think, taking a more unusual approach to the placement of the flower. I think that was the best decision you made in this piece. This is a portrait that really gets me to think because it's not just the face that you've drawn. There's also these diagrams on the left-hand side. There's the infinity symbol on the face. And so I just find myself looking at this portrait and being really curious about who this person is, what's the relationship with these diagrams. I mean, immediately it makes me think that it must be somebody who has some kind of relationship with um, mathematics or physics or science. There definitely is suggestions of that subject in this portrait. To figure out the relationship, 
that the figure has with math and science, I'm really looking to the facial expression of the figure to get information. And what I'm seeing in the face, the figure actually looks very worried. They, they don't seem very happy, actually. There's almost an anxious quality to the way that the face has been done. And so I'm wondering if maybe this drawing is about anxiety that's wrapped up in math classes or math homework or something like that. I know it's very common for a lot of people to be very anxious about all the math classes and all the tests that you have to take. I would say what I want to see more of is even more of these diagrams and even mathematical equations or whatever symbols you want to put into it because I feel right now that the face is almost too dominant that I want to see more of those symbols and maybe if this really is indeed about the anxiety of taking math exams or doing math homework that maybe the diagrams almost feel like they're taking over and that maybe the figures being swallowed by that I mean maybe I'm totally off in terms of guessing what this piece is about but whatever you do whether it's about that or about something else I would really think about ways to get the figure and the symbols to interact more Right now, the symbols look like they're just standing next to the figure. I do like that the infinity sign's on the figure, but I think you need to do a lot more than that. Your truck hole technique is quite solid. What I see you've accomplished very successfully on the right-hand side of the face is the indication of the shadows. That really helps a lot because then I can see that the lighting is coming in from the left-hand side. Just be careful with the shadows that you don't make the transitions from the light to the shadow too abrupt. Right now it feels that the shadows are almost outlined and then colored in. And what I would do is take a kneaded eraser and use a kneaded eraser to blend and blur those transitions a little bit more because otherwise it's too harsh and the figure almost seems like it's geometric in a way. So try to get a more fleshy feel to it. Good job on the brainstorming behind the subject matter. I think it's easy for a lot of people to sit down and just draw a portrait and have that be it. And I really enjoy the fact that you're engaging with your subject matter in a different way. I really hope this critique was useful to you just in terms of getting a different opinion on your artwork. I think it's great when you have a teacher that you have a very close relationship, who really knows you, who knows what your habits are, who knows what you're working on in depth, but it's also, I think, such a different experience to hear from somebody who doesn't know you at all, who doesn't know anything about your background, and who comes in totally cold. And that's where I think art is so exciting because you do get so many different opinions. And I'm sure some of you agree with me, some of you disagree with me, and I expect that. I think that's really important um, that people weigh the comments that they're getting and to say, you know what, that's a comment, I respect it, but I don't agree with it. I'm gonna do this instead, that's fine. I think that's a huge part of the art making process. Or maybe you say, you know what? I never thought about that before. That's something I can really think about and improve upon. So, you know, it's up to you what you wanna to listen to, but I think any opportunity you have to get an opinion on your artwork is always so valuable.